this is a fly that I designed out of this interesting material that uh, I was telling you is a packing material. And I designed it so it floats. These are CDC feathers uh, on and for hackles. This is uh, uh, the tail from a mallard uh, blank feather. But the body is what is unique, and I'll show you how I tie those bodies. Um, I'm going to use a red thread right now because I don't have yellow. This one was tied with yellow. This is how we prepare the material out of this foam for the body. A good sharp pair of scissors, and I just go ahead and cut it about a quarter of an inch wide. And I just slip my feathers, scissors along, and it cuts it very nicely until I get this long strip. You can see this long strip that we've cut. You can see that it sparkles. It makes a very interesting body. And I'm going to use, uh, this is GSP thread, 100 veneer. And that's... We're going to put just a regular uh, dry fly hook. This is a size 6. We'll use that for right now. I like when I fix a floating fly, I want it to float. But uh, we're going to use, for the tail on this, we're going to use some... Um, bucktail um, material. We're going to cut a little strip here. We don't need a lot. Clean out the fuzz with the short fibers. We're going to go ahead and put that on the hook without stacking it. We're just going to wrap it here a couple of times. Then we're going to cinch it down. Now, I don't particularly like this fuzzy results here, so I've devised a way to deal with that. And here's how we do it. I want, I want the tail to be more compact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little bit of uh, ultra glue on there, just a little tiny bit. Just one little dab is all that it takes. I'm going to take my finger and press it into the fibers. Then I'm going to take and hold those fibers together. And I'm going to zap it with an ultraviolet light just for a moment. And that sets it so that the fibers are collected together and they're not flared out from the tying them on with the line. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put this strip of foam that I've cut are you starting at the back? I start in the middle. It doesn't make any difference, but I actually wind it all the way to the back. Okay. And there's a reason for that, doing that. Now, I usually tie this with yellow thread, but I don't have any yellow thread amount. And you start wrapping this body. You go down it once. So you're overlapping it a little I'm bit. Overlapping it, then you come back. And it looks like you're pulling it a little bit tight. I, I tighten it up. It's not really strong material, so you can't overly tighten it. Then when I get it back here, you see where it's where they, I'm still flat, but I lay this and I stretch it over the thread and lay it and t tie it off at the top like that. Now here's the interesting part about this material is that then I take it and I segment the body. I, putting some pressure on it, and you've got to have a good strong thread to do that. And uh, Tie it off just... Tie it off. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of this, and remember this is about a quarter inch wide, I'm going to double it up, pull it over, and I'm going to cut it off. Now I'm going to manufacture and shape some wings out of this, and I like to cut them from the back and cut them up so that they kind of look like wings, and then I take and cut, cut them here because I don't want all that there. Now right here, it's got this little hump from the body material. I go ahead and cut this. I'm going to trim this just a little bit more so it's thinner there. Then I'm going to divide those, and I'm going to set the wings. And this is what's interesting. 
I'm going to set the wings and look what happens to the wings. They just flare right up. You don't have to do anything other than just, just because you've got the hump there where the body material uh, is put, where the wings are placed on the body material. So you need, may need to practice a few times. Yeah, but it works. You can make the wings bigger, smaller, whichever you like. But you got to remember that these are foam wings. And uh, then we talk about cheap material. I have all of these CDC feathers. You know where I got those? I took several ducks that we shot out duck hunting, and I went and uh, plucked my own CD feathers. It comes from around the oil gland, just in front of the tail on a duck. In fact, the uh, French CDC stands for butt, so they're butt feathers is what they are. I think that's funny. And I select a few of those out. These make excellent floating uh, feathers. Short through until I find just the right size and what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the fibers from these feathers. I sort through my conglomeration and I think I've got enough here. And what I like to do is that I like to take one feather and about a, just a small portion of it and I like to lay it between the wings. And this is for the purpose of floating this fly. I want this fly to float and everything, all the material going into this is red floating material. The tail is hollow fibers from a bucktail. The wings are these little foam wings. And then I go ahead and put a couple of CD feathers on each side. I wad them up and just take the ends of them. This one's plenty big, what is it? Just on that side. Now I know like this seems like a big amount of fuzzy feathers on this, but I want this this fly to float. You can eliminate some of the feathers if you want a better profile with the wings. Pinch it all down and get a nice tight head on it. I like this good strong thread. You can really put some, tighten up the head material. And I like to straighten these wings out a little bit. I make sure I got enough of these CDs, CDC feathers out so that it's going to float well. Now, the, <clears throat> it's interesting about these, this tying this, and I'll show you in just a minute why it's interesting. Can you we're put gonna, it back in the vise? We're going to put it back in the vise and put some head cement on it. I do not like my flies to come apart, so I just put a little tiny gob of head cement on there. Now what is unique about this is that you can make this into anything you want to make it into. And the trick is to use these Sharpies with a fine point. You can paint the body any color you want. For this one here we can, <coughs> we can fold back this, we can streak the body with black. Take it out of the vise and paint it a little bit. You can paint it any color you want. Paint it even purple, green, blue, yellow. The wings, if you want to fold the wings back, you can put a little bit of color in the wings. Whichever color, whichever color you'd like, you can paint them dark, brown, yellow. But anyways, this one here is painted yellow, but you can see that it makes just a wonderful body. It's tough, it's durable, it floats. Because all those, that whole thing is little uh, <clears throat> bubbles of foam in that, in that body. And you use some ribbon on that one. 
We use some ribbon for the wings and I'll show you later how the, it's a very inexpensive material to make beautiful wings. And that's, uh, I don't know what you'd call that, I call it my foam fly because it is, it's so interesting. You can, you can make different sets of wings on it. This one here is, uh, this one here is, is, uh, I folded the wings back over and made the wings so that they would come over the body and cover the, cover the body of the fly. I got a little bit of color on there. But it, it makes a wonderful fly and, I, and they're tough, they're durable and they will float. Important thing is they catch fish. And they're made out of material that you just collect, with the exception of the thread and the bucktail, everything else is free.